Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Auto Central South Africa's number one motoring podcast. And my name is George Mini, and as usual, I'm joined by Wandile Sishi. Well, before we get into anything, Wandi, <laughs> um, let's thing. just talk about Baku for a second. <laughs> Does your man know how uh, to turn corners? You know, that was a very heartbreaking moment in my life. I have seen so it. many memes. Yeah, it's bad. It's where, bad. where you know, there was this one cartoon I saw, yeah. cartoon with a bunch of cars, yeah, like and the, and the road splits, yes, yeah. and uh, and uh, and and the one car's going off, on, and it's Hamilton, and it's Hamilton. Yeah, <laughs> it was tough. It was tough, but what a race! What a race! No, so it was really good. Mad. Yeah, uh, really good. So street races are good when when there's overtaking opportunity, and I think Baku, in my That's opinion, the is the perfect track for yeah. that because it's a street race. It's yeah. quick. Um, versus Monaco where you can't overtake. Exactly. And also for the challenge for the drivers, I think it makes mm. them a little bit more, you know. Sharp. Exactly. Pity about the tires. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't we'll know what's going what on there. there yeah. I wonder um, if, uh, is it Michelin? It's Pirelli. Pirelli, sorry, not Michelin. Yeah. Sorry, Michelin. So tires are uh, one compound and softer this year. So that's kind of the issue. But I mean, I think it makes things more interesting because the teams have to be smarter with their strategy. No, but, uh, you know, uh, maybe it's going to turn out that uh, the wrong tire oh, life nice. in comp... No, well, not the wrong compound, but, you know, the, the, the tire maker or the tire manufacturer is supposed to give the yeah. Formula One team, well, this tire can do this, this much, much mileage. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not sure that I heard that they are doing the mileage that they said. Well, they do suggest, um, but it's the first time they're testing out these tires on the different tracks. So, you know, trial and error. Anyways... Yeah, oh, but it's potentially life-threatening. It definitely is. But yeah. you know what? It is, uh, it's a dangerous sport at the end of the day. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Nonetheless, let's get into uh, today's episode. So uh, we unpack something really cool. So what we're going to do today mm. is we're going to flip it around and uh, Wendy's going to take control yep. in, a, in a minute. And uh, we're going we're gonna to explore what it's actually like to live with an EV. Mm. Um uh, From somebody that's currently doing it, me. Um, yeah. And then we detail... Uh, 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 what to consider before owning an EV and uh, some of the myths and drawbacks um, and uh, the wins um, yeah. for what it's worth. And then uh, we'll end off as usual with uh, questions from our Ask Auto Trader platform where Wendy and I will attempt to answer them. So we can the listeners find the show, Wendy? You can find the show at 9 a.m. every single uh, Monday um, on cliffcentral.com, but that's for the audio. But if you want to see this amazing car and some of the cool, cooler content that we have um, check out the footage. Uh, come to the Auto Trader SA YouTube channel, and you'll find us streaming their simulcast. And uh, if you want to just listen to the show at your convenience, we're still also on Spotify, iTunes, any kind of streaming service, you'll find us there. And uh, don't forget to hit subscribe. Tell us what you think about the show, and like the show, or dislike, depending on how you feel about it. Exactly. Give us your comments. Um, so let's talk about this car for a second. Yeah. This so car was kindly uh, given to me to drive by uh, um, a Jaguar Land Rover Santon. Yeah, I mean, stunning. And uh, it is a hybrid. It is a hybrid, yeah. Not fully electric, but... Yeah, it's a, it's a hybrid. So, you know, some people might say this is a, a vegan secretly eating meat. <laughs> That's one way to put it. That's definitely one way to put it. Um, and that's a hybrid for you. So uh, uh, it is the Evoke, um, which I think is cute. I think it's Range Rover. Isn't it the, the Vogue? Is it Vogue? Sorry, yeah. not the Evoque. Sorry, yeah. the Vogue. You're right. Uh, P400E. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is, uh, it's beautiful to drive. I mean, uh, I, I used to drive a Land Rover and yeah. I always said it's like driving my couch. Yeah. Because it's comfortable. Uh, yeah. This is like driving an entire cinema. <laughs> yeah, basically, basically. Well, that's what the episode's about today. You know, we're going to be talking about actually living with an EV. Um, so there's obviously lots of myths and misconceptions about actually owning an EV, mm. um, what that entails. So, you know, recently we actually did the EV report, um, uh, which can be found in reports.autotrade.co.za, where we kind of unpacked what are the actual findings and results of how people believe or perceive EVs. Um, and we found that in South Africa, it's actually definitely doable. So um, we've asked you to kind of be our guinea pig and test out that theory because it's one thing to just say that it's doable and another to actually do it. Uh, so, you know, let's get straight into it. So I'm just going to ask you a few questions and we'll unpack some of this. So just off the bat, what are the three words to summarize your experience thus far about owning an EV? I don't know if I could sum it up in three words, but if I try, it's probably fast, yeah, tranquil, <laughs> 
And then the third one's not quite a word. It's like driving your iPhone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think um, we've kind of spotlighted that, that it's, it's exactly that. It's a piece of tech that you need to charge. Um, so I can, I can completely understand that. Um, but what are the realities? You know, we kind of, when we did our research, we found that there's a few things um, that were myths. Um, and a large part of why people don't understand EVs is, you know, the cost, um, specifically the entry cost. Um, so in your opinion, what have you found in terms of the price um, of owning an EV? Are they too expensive? I mean, yeah. that's kind of like, let's call a spade a spade. Um, they're definitely too expensive. But that's not because it's the fault of the OEM. Mm. Um, it's, the, it's the world we find ourselves in where in South Africa we, um, uh, we have high import duties. Yeah. <clears throat> now, we've got to kind of contextualize import duties in terms of, uh, uh, you know, what import duties are there to do is to discourage import. Yeah. Because... Countries' economies thrive better when things are made inside the country and exported to get uh, foreign hard currency into the into the country. So, yeah. so, 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 import duties are not a bad thing. Um, they're a good thing in in some instances, but in this instance, uh, the EV is uh, attracts an import duty of twenty five percent. Um, and they are none manufactured here at the moment. So you're paying the 25% plus ad valorem tax, which I think is around 17%, okay. plus some other taxes as well, depending on uh, the scenario. Yeah. So, uh, so off the bat, you're paying at least uh, 25 plus 17%, you know, so 42%. Yeah. Uh, in tax on the car uh, for importing it. Um, and obviously we import it through the, the OEMs. Now, you get two kinds of manufacturers or assemblers. Those that manufacture here and export yeah. and, though, and then import as yeah, well because yeah. not everything Can be in our local market is made here. Um, so, for instance, uh, BMW – uh, um, or Mercedes, or even Toyota. Some cars are imported, some cars are exported. Yeah. So you get export credits against your imports. Um, but uh, uh, a company like uh, like Jaguar Land Rover, where the cars are imported, um, presents with them with a problem, and mm. that is the import tax. They've got no uh, export credits to set off against those imports, and and imports on ICE vehicles is eighteen percent. So so there's yeah. another challenge. So uh, so if you ask me the question, is price a problem? Yeah, that's definitely that, that's where the that's where the challenge lies primarily. But there's yes. other there's other challenges, right? So I think a lot of well, another misconception is range anxiety. I think. Um, for a lot of consumers who are looking into buying an EV, they don't really know what is the range of an EV. So can we unpack what those misconceptions were and what we found? Well, so, I mean, range anxiety uh, uh, shouldn't be a problem yeah. um, from, you know, into the, into the future. Maybe three, four, five years ago, range anxiety was a real thing. Um, but right now in South Africa, there's a couple of reasons. And that is, Cars can do way in excess of, of 200 kilometers on a, on a full charge. Um, my EV, the, the Jaguar I-Pace, uh, can do in excess of 400 kilometers in the real world. Yes, they yeah. claim above 400 in the, in the tests, but those are in laboratory conditions. Um, I'm seeing a real-life experience of about 400 kilometers. Okay. But I never get it down there. Because you're charging every single I'm day. I'm charging every day. So it never, my, my car literally, unless I go on a long trip, which I'm going to do mm. in the near future, but uh, uh, my car never goes, hardly ever goes below 80%, sometimes down to 70%. That kind of leads me to my first question is how has that experience changed your driving experience? So on a daily basis, do you charge yes, every day? Every day. So, uh, so, so I've, got, I've got a hybrid way of charging. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've obviously got uh, uh, green energy in, on my house, which mm. um, you know, isn't, isn't, it's off the, off the grid for the house, yeah. but it's not enough to charge the car. Because remember, the Jaguar I-Pace is 90 kilowatt yeah, uh, it's battery. It's a big battery. A big, big battery. Yeah. Um, uh, in my house, I think I've got... Um, about 20 kilowatts, but 20 kilowatts is more than enough to run my house for 24 hours, well, the solar panels, and then to run 12 hours at night. Mm. Um, um, so it's not enough to charge a car. You can see that uh, you know, 20 kilowatts is a quarter of that car's capacity. Okay. So, uh, so the number of batteries you would need in order to charge a 90 kilowatt car uh, mm. is humongous and very expensive. So what I do is if I'm at home during the day, which now during lockdown is most of the time, yeah. um, I'll plug the car into the slow charger 
Okay. Uh, just so you don't kind of drain uh, the rest of the you know the utility of your solar panels. Well, no, no. So, so, the, so I've got more than enough solar panels to charge the car and to charge the batteries at home and to run the house. Okay. Because during the day, the house is using very little electricity. Yeah. So therefore, the solar panels, if I'm not plugged into the car, it's actually a waste of sun energy on the solar panels. Mm. Mm. So, uh, um, um, so then I'll plug the car into the slow charger, which charges at a rate of about 2.5 to 3 kilowatt, uh, kilowatts. Um, and a 90 kilowatt car like the Jaguar will take about um, 30 hours to charge on a, on, on a, plugged into a wall socket. Into a normal wall yes, socket. Which is okay. slow. I mean, you, when, you, when, you, when you see that. But zero, that's like zero to full. That's zero though, to and full, never exactly. So if you think about it, uh, 80% to full yeah. um, is going to take uh, 20% of 30 hours, which is uh, six hours, six, okay. maybe eight hours to charge yeah. from 80% to full. So if you've got your car plugged into my solar panels all day, you're going to get your range, so you're going to have zero fuel cost, mm. effectively. Essentially um, all the time, yeah. Um, but your car's not going to be standing all day, so you've got to use a hybrid of uh, of ESCOM and uh, and the solar panels, unless you invest a lot more in uh, in green energy on your mm. on your roof. So uh, so at the end of the day, um, I use a hybrid of mm. um, using the solar panels if I'm at home, plug it into the slow charger, and then um, every night plug it into the faster charger, which uh, 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 which is. Uh, linked to my distribution electricity board um, in the garage. How much faster is using the... 7.4 kilowatts. Okay. So, so you can charge in about zero to full in about 12 hours. Okay, it's much better, yeah. Which, you know, mo most nights I'm charging for two hours and then it's full. So because now, you, nev you never get it to zero. Well, yeah, it's never, it's never really below 80%. So, okay. And have you had to be kind of cognizant of your vehicle's range now? So let's take a, a scenario where you want to go on holiday. Um, is there support for people who own EVs in terms of the right routes to ensure that they never hit zero? So I'm, I'm busy planning a long trip at the moment, yeah. um, uh, and uh, and 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 I'm gonna you know I'm gonna try and capture that trip. But um, um, in planning the trip, I've realised that it's possible to get probably to eighty percent of places in South Africa, the main places, mm. Cape Town, easy. Okay. There's, a, there's a charger, literally, that, you know, uh, uh, a company like Grid Cars would say there's a charger every 200 case. There's a charger in less than every 200 case. Yeah. So I've done the research down to Durban and down to Cape Town now. There's a charger less than every 200 case. <clears throat> the only stretch where it's more than 200 case is between, uh, I think it was Bloemfontein and um, just down to, you know, when you get into the Western Cape. Like there's a There's a stretch, not, uh, not Nisner. Uh, no, 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 I'm not talking about the Eastern Cape or Western Cape. Yeah. There's a stretch there where you need 300 k's of range, okay? okay? But there's a way to go, no, sorry, it's from, not from Brimfordham, from Colesburg down to, I think it's Harrimansdorp or something, um, where there's a stretch you need 300 k's of range. But there's a detour that takes you about 60 or 70 kilometers further past Colesburg, not on the N1, okay. where there's a charger every 150 k's. So you can definitely do any sort of, Long trip. Any long trip on, on a major highway. So, so from a support point of view, there, there are charges everywhere. Yeah. Um, you know. So now you ask me, am I nervous to do this trip? Yes, I am. Mm. I've never done it. Mm. So I would be nervous. But once I've done it once, I think it's, I'm going to get confidence in, uh, in the car. So I understand the range anxiety thing on a long trip. Yeah. I don't get it on a on, on, Look, it's on been done. Um, it's definitely been done a few <clears> times <throat> in South Africa. People have done the trip all the way down to Cape Town. So um, the proof is in the pudding. And- you know, fortunately, there are more grids or more charging stations that are, you know, coming up every single... Mm. You know, well, the, I mean, there's, there's three kinds of chargers on your route. There's yeah. a 22 kilowatt charger, there's a 33 kilowatt charger, and there's a 66 kilowatt charger. Okay. okay. Most of the chargers on most of the highways are 66 kilowatts with a secondary charger of 33 kilowatts. Okay. And then some chargers have a secondary charger at 22 kilowatts. But most of the chargers actually have a high... Uh, charge, or should I say, a fast charge DC charger, which is the 66 kilowatt. Yeah, that can probably charge your car in watts. Like well, minutes. if you're doing 200 k's, so yeah. my car can do 400 k's. Okay. So if you're doing 200, you're 50% battery power. So mm -hmm. you've got to just change your mindset of how the how your how your brain works with it. 50% uh, battery power, and 50% uh, battery power would be 45 kilowatts okay. that you've used, um, which means that uh, uh, to charge up 45 kilowatts at a 66 kilowatt charge is going to take you 45 minutes. Yeah, 
it's definitely doable. Okay. So uh, another thing that a lot of people who are kind of scared about adopting EVs is this idea that they're not fun. Um, the sound's gone. Can you spin your tires? Can you, can you drift it? Um, for you, is the experience of owning an EV fun? Has it been fun? Well, I don't know if I want to drift my car, but you can. <laughs> yeah. You can turn off the traction control. Yeah. And uh, you're probably going to drift easier than uh, uh, than you would a regular car if you've got a rear-wheel driven uh, EV. Yeah. Uh, the Jaguar I-Pace is a, a four-wheel drive. Just because of the torque that it has, yeah. Yes, it's going to instantly spin those tires. Yeah. I haven't tried it. Um, you know, uh, the, 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 it's an absolute myth that it's not fun. Yeah. Um, when when you when you start to feel how sensitive that throttle or accelerator is, mm. you start to realize what you're dealing with, um, and that is a that is a beast that is way funner than any sort of ice vehicle that you've driven. The yeah. only thing, so so, like, does I, that novelty not go away though? Of just the quick. I don't know. I've only had the car for a few weeks, so but so uh, far it's been a blast. So far, I love getting. It. I mean, I'm 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 going to you know when I'm finished driving this car, I'm going to go and uh, uh, go and get it back into the into the Jaguar, and I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I love this car. It's beautiful. It's a yeah. hybrid. It's, it ticks all the boxes, um, but I can't wait to get back into my Jaguar. Um, mm. You know, for me, car cars became. Um, more than uh, just mobility for you. It's, it's it, it became functional, yeah, getting from yeah. point A to point. I didn't really care about, yeah. uh, uh, you know, the car as much, or should I say get excited about the car as much as I've got excited about the, the, the EV. Has, um, when you actually bought your EV, did your insurance premium change? Is this something that people need to consider? Um, or is it the same thing as just buying any, like, any ICE vehicle? It feels like it's the same. Yeah, like um, the experience of buying it. There's the same insurance Process. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. What I did notice was, I'm not going to tell you who the insurance company is because I don't want to badmouth them, but uh, uh, um, they asked me what the engine capacity is. Why did they ask you that? Because it's a standard question that they ask. Okay. So but part of the insurance is, it's, what is the engine capacity? And, uh, and I wrote back to them and I said to them, it doesn't have an engine. It doesn't have an engine, yeah. So. Um, and then they immediately got it, so they weren't they yeah. weren't stupid. Uh, but they asked me what the engine capacity is, um, and I told them that it's a Jaguar I Pace. Uh, um, mm. um, so 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 I think I think the the, the norm is to think about. Um, That's how people think now. They think well, it's it is the norm. Um, yeah. But now there's just a new, I guess, boy on the block. What the meat eating vegan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so what about maintenance? Um, I think a lot of people who own ICE vehicle, you just think about car parts, you think about tires, um, you know, you think about oil. Is there different considerations when it comes to maintaining a car? Are there dealerships? Are there repair stores that can kind of you know, fix any problem you have? So on the, on the question of tires, right, mm. in an EV, I think you're going to mm. go through tires quicker. Mm. Just because the car is so powerful... Um, that you've got this natural tendency to put your foot down uh, and not and, and not progressively squeeze the throttle mm. if you want to overtake. And that initial that, that torque is yeah. going to wear your tires down. So if you drive nicely, you get the same tire wear. But in an EV, it's hard to not use the torque. Um, Just because it's so much fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, you've got to be careful you don't go over the speed limit because you can go over the speed limit so quickly. Um, uh, so, so tires definitely, uh, uh, brake, brake pads. So EVs obviously use brake pads the same as other cars use brake pads. Yeah. But you don't have to use the brakes except for in the last one meter. Very rarely. Unless you're again driving the car and using its torque. Yeah. Then you have to use the brakes because it's just, you've got to slow the thing down. But if you drive using the uh, regenerative braking, which is you take your foot off the, the gas not gas, you take your foot off the <laughs> throttle and uh, the car reverses the polarity on the motors yeah. and then it brakes you. It's kind of self-braking. So, yeah, so regenerative braking. And, uh, uh, and that slows you down right up until the last one or two meters and mm. then you have to touch the brakes. So I reckon these EVs, if you drive them nicely, you, your, brake, your brake pads will last in an infinite amount of time. Okay, so there isn't a, a substantial kind of change and obviously you just don't have to think about oil anymore. Um, yeah, there's no fluid cars. changes. Yeah, there's yeah. I mean, you've got to take the car in. So my car's telling me that uh, it's got to go in for a... Uh, um, it's a software update. Service in 15,000 Ks. Okay. <clears throat> but what they do is more than likely just diagnose the car. Mm. So I'll find out and I'll let you know when I get there. 
Yeah. But okay. uh, um, but there's no oil to change. There's no, you know, remember an ICE vehicle has more than 2,000 moving parts. The EV's got maybe 200. So yeah. 10% of the moving parts. Okay, so let's talk about mobility. I think a lot of people are scared that EVs are threatening, you know, what is fun about cars. Um, are you not kind of, do we not think that EVs will take away what car enthusiasts love about cars? What is it? The, the noise? All of it. It's just the experience of, of what? Of a car. Let me use I'm uh, trying to, fi- I'm trying me, to figure out what example. we're, because the only thing that we're missing. Yeah. It's just the noise. Is the noise. Yeah. There's nothing else that's, that's gone. Um, we'll take Formula E and Formula One, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of people use that, um, that example. Do you think that everything's going to move into this? Not Formula necessarily. E kind of- uh, I've always said that, um, you know, before cars, we used to ride horses. Mm. Mm. Now, where are horses on the racetrack? Okay. So there's a place. Uh, so they, there's be a- probably a place for uh, um, for probably hybrids. I would I would imagine because yeah. look at Formula One. Formula One is uh, turbo hybrid. I mean, look, uh, Porsche is doing some. You know, they're doing their own research and finding ways to, you know, hit net zero but still have the sound um, of I guess combustion engines. So I don't know. I don't know. Like it it's just me. It. I'm a sample of one. I, I I don't see the attraction to the sound. I, yes, I know some people say that. Yes, it gives the car soul. Mm. But I promise you, when you put your foot down in that car, you will feel the soul going through the seat. I mean, I've seen, I've seen a few, um, you know, EVs winning cars of the year for three years running now in some, in some places. Um, and a lot of journalists are saying the same thing. Experience it and, you know. When you, just when you actually experience the EV, then, you know, you, you, can't, you can't really have an opinion if you haven't gone there. Mm. Um, go and drive one first. And then come yeah. back. Yes. Okay, well, uh, let's talk about adoption. Um, in your opinion, what are kind of the key aspects that are required for mass adoption? Well, kind we've got to... We've spoken w- about price, <clears throat> but is there more to the story? Price is a big factor. So we've done the research. Go to reports.autotrader.co.za and you, you'll go and, you'll download it from last year. Mm. And, uh, and you'll see that um, uh, 500,000 rand seems to be the, the line in the sand. We've, we've, we've got to get these EVs down below 500,000 rand for the average consumer. In South and Africa? In South Africa, yes. Because that seems to be the price point that uh, consumers are, are willing to change to an EV. And they are willing. They are willing, yeah. The, the, the research is clear. Uh, or should I say the study is clear. We, they are willing to, to, to move to EVs. Um, the range anxiety thing is purely, in my opinion, just an education job. Okay. Um, uh, there is no reason to worry about charging or range. Talk about load shedding for a second. Yeah. Um, load shedding is not a factor in charging my iPace. Yeah. So if I had to think about, if I had to get down to 70%, which is 30% of 90 kilowatts, that's, that's, uh, uh, um, that's 30 kilowatts. Okay. At 30 kilowatts, the charger is at about uh, 7.4 kilowatts. So it's going to take, it's going to take roughly three, four hours to charge. Okay. Load shedding most of the time is for about two hours. Two hours at a time, yeah. So if you plug the car in at night and you take it off charge in the morning, you've got at least eight hours, maybe 10, a window period where that car is going to be charging. Yeah. Load shedding is not going to be that entire time unless, unless there's, a, well, there's another, another power problem. Yeah. I'm not saying that the grid isn't an issue because <clears throat> we all know that the grid's got to be upgraded and, uh, and there's, work to, be done and there's there. work to be done there. And, uh, and our power delivery needs to be upgraded. And, uh, and, and so my fear is that with mass adoption of EVs puts more load on the That's grid, right. yeah. which then in essence makes the grid worse. For everybody, yeah. so so that's the challenge. But right now, there's no there's no reason you can't uh, live with an EV, even with load shedding, mm, even if you don't have solar panels. Last question before we move on to our ask, ask Auto Trader segments is: Are there people who can actually fix EVs? Um, does South Africa have a repair and maintenance infrastructure or network currently to facilitate all the EVs that we currently have within the market? Um, so I think everybody's learning together. Yeah, <clears throat> there are experts at dealerships like Jaguar Land Rover Santon, who is the highest seller of, yeah. of the iPaces. Okay, 
um, uh, uh, um, they, you know, they've, uh, I, I don't want to mention the numbers for them, but, but they've sold the most number of EVs, I think, um, out, of, out of all the Jaguar dealerships. Okay. And uh, if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm happy to kind of, <laughs> of highlight the dealership that, uh, that, that, that it has. It. But I think Jaguar Land Rover Santon is the biggest seller of, uh, of the I-Pace. Um, and, and so these dealerships that are selling them have technicians um, at the dealership that, uh, uh, that are um, experts or at least becoming experts on the, on the car. Now, bear in mind, you plug the car in yeah. at the dealership or they plug the car in and it's diagnosed by the computer network. It actually links to the com- Jaguar in England. So it's all kind of all digital. There's no... And the systems tell you what's wrong with the car or diagnose the car. Okay. So, so um, uh, you know, and at the moment, I think that everybody's learning. Um, yeah. Now, the, 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 the thing that's going to come is part replacement. Mm. Mm. And that's where the technicians are going to have to be, which I think are probably being spun up right now. Mm. Okay. Well, that's kind of all the <clears> questions <throat> we have for you with regard to this. But obviously, we're going to be following um, your journey. Um, with an EV. So, you know, if there's any more questions, if anybody has any other questions, you know, we'll definitely facilitate them and answer them as we... Punch them into this video. Ask your question. Try and, I'll try and answer it if I can. Um, uh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm on this journey to, to, to learn and to... And to sh- case, yeah. yeah, you know, we, we've got to do this. We've yeah, got to... It's the future, right? We, 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 at, we at risk of losing our automotive industry's sales, retail sales, mm-hmm. um, uh, locally and internationally if we don't shift very quickly because what we do this year next year and the year after is mm. going to be the be the bed in for the next 10 years because it takes long this the, 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 the wheel turns very slowly in the automotive industry sometimes yeah. um, <clears throat> so the decisions we take this year and next year are vital and we, we we've got to do this I think definitely okay so that gets us on to our next segment. I suppose I'm in the driver's seat now, Wandy. You're back in the driver's seat. I'm back it's in all the yours. driver's seat. Thank you oh, for that. All right, shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> so every day people send auto traders some motoring related uh, questions all about the car, things, car buying and selling. And so Wandy and I will now attempt to answer three of these burning questions. What's the first question, Wandy? First question comes from Kaiser, who's asked the all new 2018 Mercedes Benz, well, I guess new then, um, X250D is governed to a maximum speed of 180 Ks. Is there a way of ungoverning it? So he wants to go faster than 180. Is it possible? Um, I'm pretty sure, uh, Kaiser, that uh, a very smart tuning workshop will be able to ungovern this uh, car for you. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some, you know, there's lots of smart people around who can who can do these things. But first of all, um, you know, if the car has a warranty, it's going to be void. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> if you mess with the car, it's uh, your warranty will be void. Um, you could kind of be messing up other electronics yeah, so, by, doing that, yeah. by doing that. So you've got to be careful. So, you know, the sophisticated cars nowadays are very expensive to to replace electronics. So you start to mess with electronics, you don't know what the impact is. Mm. Um, that's the second thing. But I think the most important thing is we don't recommend that you do it. And the reason we don't recommend that you do it is because cars have been built for a specific purpose by the OEM. Designed specifically yeah. by the OEM in real world, for real world conditions. Now, chances are that this car can't exceed 180 kilometers an hour because its design can't handle it. Can't handle the speed. Yes. Love that, yeah. Um, remember this, you know, the, 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 you take it to 200 kilometers an hour, is the, is the suspension going to be able to handle it? Is the chassis going to be able to handle it? Is the, uh, uh, you know, wh- what is the reason the car's governed to 180? Yeah. Um, I, I would imagine it's, it's, it's in its design. So, so I think you're taking a lot of risk by, by trying to get the cars to go far. What do you want to do at 200 k's an hour? Yeah, what are you way? doing there? Uh, no one like we don't have an autobahn in South Africa. Exactly. Um, exactly. You know, don't so be the silly. short answer is yes, you can, but not advised. Not advised. Next question. Next question comes from Wei, who's asking, uh, residual or not? So my interest rate is 6.57 um, and the residual is 40%. Is that better than an interest rate of 8.8 with no res- residual? With a 50k deposit. So now you gave me a heads up that uh, uh, that you were going to answer, uh, ask me this question, Wendy. And so I what did, I did yeah. was uh, I went and did a couple of uh, did a little bit of maths. So um, so um, so what I did was I, I sketched out two scenarios. Way the first mm-hmm. scenario is I took you didn't mention what price car you were talking no, about. Yeah, no. you just mentioned the deposit. So I took a 500,000 rand car over 60 months, 
at your interest rate of 6.57% with a 40% residual. So it turns out that total repayments for the entire 60-month period with the residual is about 618,000 rand. Okay. Okay. With a monthly repayment of about 6,975 rand, just under 7,000 rand. And that gives you a final payment of 200,000 rand. So that's okay. your residual at the that's very your, end. At the very end. So the total amount paid over the period of the contract would be 618,000 Rand for a 500,000 Rand car. Okay, so that okay. difference is your interest. Then I took your second scenario and uh, uh, applied 8.8% to 500,000 Rand over 60 months with zero deposit. Oh, sorry, not with zero, but with zero residual. And the monthly payments were? The monthly repayments were up from 6,900 to 10,300 Rand a month. Okay. okay, and your total repayments over the over the period was six hundred and nineteen thousand rand. Just about a thousand rand <clears> above <throat> those. It's about the same. So yeah. it depends if the payments in the beginning or the end of the month that makes a, a slight difference. So so all in all, the total payments over the period are no different. Mm. But but <laughs> if you don't watch your uh, yourself during the period and you don't remember that there's two hundred thousand rand payments coming at the end could catch you out. So, so basically, <clears throat> understand if you can save that 200,000 rand. Or if you're yeah. confident that the car's value will be more than 200,000 rand at the end, yeah. then yes, it, it helps your cash flow right now. Okay, understood. Last question is from Desreb who's asking, I want to buy a vehicle cash from a private seller. Uh, what should I know or what should I make sure that I do to ensure that it's legal um, and to avoid any kind of, you know, like a bad case scenario? Well, uh, Desrep, uh, you know, buying and selling privately is obviously uh, the the toughest way because you've got to do everything yourself. So, uh, so what what I would say is um, uh, take a copy of the Natus document. You just need a copy of the Natus document to a test center and run the VIN number through the test center to verify that this car is legally registered and in the name of the person that is selling it to you. Okay. So that's, that's what I'll do, you know, step number one. Um, if that checks out, then uh, um, then you need to check whether the, 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 the car is financed or not because uh, you shouldn't buy a car, well, you shouldn't buy a car that has uh, existing finance. Yeah. Um, um, you sh- if, if somebody sells your car that has finance on it, uh, you need to offer to transfer the portion of the finance to the, directly to the bank so that you can get the Natus documents. Okay. Okay. Because... If, you, if you're going to transfer, let's say you're buying a car with 250,000 Rand and there's still 50,000 Rand owing on the car yeah. and you give the 250,000 Rand to the, buy, uh, to the seller. 50,000 Rand needs to go to the bank. 50 grand needs to go to the bank. You're not guaranteed that they, he's going to settle that car. Yeah. So, so my advice would be try and settle it directly with the bank, the 50 grand. Okay. Understood. Um, <clears throat> Is there anything else? Then there's a there's a there's a there's a there's a neat trick to check whether the car could be financed, and that is on the Natus document there is title holder and there's owner. Yeah. Oftentimes the bank is listed there as the as the title, title holder. holder yeah. um, and uh, uh, so check that the Natus document, both the title and the owner, is um, under the same name seller. of the seller. Yeah. Otherwise, there could be finance um, um, on the on the car. And uh, uh, get a roadworthy certificate. So uh, um, you know, get the previous owner to um, to get you a roadworthy certificate, and uh, um, and get the previous owner to fill out the change of ownership document with a black pen. Um, and then you take that to your local licensing office with your proof of residence, ID, and certificate of uh, vehicle registration, the NATUS, and uh, um, get it into your own name. Just simple as that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's all I have. Well, that uh, brings us to the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. It's been epic. Wandile uh, Sishi and I'm with George Mini. See you next time. And uh, hopefully Hamilton isn't uh, I'm leading. sure you will. I'm uh, sure you will. <laughs>